everybody. Hi, guys. Well, from gorgeous springtime in Salt Lake City. It's Thank God I'm Atheist. It's a podcast. With, uh, I'm Frank Feldman. Yes, you are. And I'm Dan Beecher. <laughs> and neither of us have done this yeah. with each other for a little minute. Well, I, was, I, was, <laughs> I had in my mind with the actual hosts. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Here we are. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and coming up today, we're going to, uh, it's just been so lovely outside, Dan. The weather's turning. Oh. It's almost summer. Yeah. And, which always means trips to southern Utah, up into the mountains for us, you know. Oh, you poor bastards that don't live in a place as gorgeous as this. <laughs> I feel for you, kids, because, uh, our place is the shit. Yeah, and so, uh, it brought to mind the, uh, sort of this... A continuing conversation that we've had about awe and wonder, and, uh, and actually, I, I have I have some thoughts. Good. Today. Yes, we will we will be talking about uh, yeah experiencing awe awe when it's not about uh, Jeebus. Yeah, isn't awe a great word? Awe awe. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> But before that, we got to tell some stories. Indeed, Dan. Well, I've got the story of a uh, Pope Francis. Okay. You know, Pope Fran- there was so much promise with P- Pope Francis. He came right out of the gate. He just seemed like he was going to be different. Seemed yeah, like there super- was going to be a new tone oh. set by him. And the tone did change. The tone did change. You are you are correct. Nothing else changed, but the tone, <laughs> a thousand percent changed. Well, I want to uh, highlight just how much, th- you know, it's only the tone. Oh, okay. Uh, because he he revealed himself to have a lot more in common with Ratzinger. Oh, God. Benedict himself. <laughs> Pope Emeritus. Um, and Prada shoe wearing. Yeah. Uh, extraordinaire. Um, yeah, Pope Francis... Uh, has revealed himself to be grumpy old man Pope. Oh, no. Uh, by coming out and saying that selfies are a sign that young men and women are deprived of meaningful human interaction with others. <laughs> <laughs> and also get off my lawn. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, he talks, He was uh, talking to a group of priests, um, some as the Pope does. You, it's, you know. uh, it's basically all he has to talk to. <laughs> and uh, he says, they were all there waiting for me. And he's talking about a recent um, event sure. where there were a lot of youth. Right? Yeah. Uh, when I arrived, they made noise, as young people do. That's old sounding. Yeah. Uh, I went to greet them, and only a few gave their hand. The majority were with their cell phones saying, photo, 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 selfie. <laughs> I saw that this is their reality. This is the real world, not human con that that is the real world, not human contact. And this is serious. They are virtualized youths. Oh, okay. It's the matrix. Right. And here's, here's another, here's a really good old man moment. Okay. The world of virtual communication is a good thing, but when it becomes alienating, it makes you forget to shake hands. <laughs> Why aren't the kids these days shaking hands? Oh, that is a treat. Uh, <laughs> Popey. They don't give a shit about you. They just want their friends to know that they met you. <laughs> yeah. They're, you're not going to be their friend for life. Right. They know that. Right. You know that. Whether they touch your hand or they get a selfie, like... Touching your hand doesn't go onto Facebook. No. <laughs> no. Uh, so uh, I actually had an, a moment with a, a, a minor celebrity where I was I was like, I know for a fact this guy is going to hate me if I ask for a selfie mm-hmm. and would much rather just have a little two-minute conversation where we have some sort of connection or whatever. Uh-huh. But I also know that I'm never going to see this guy again. Uh-huh. Selfie! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and yeah exactly yeah right that's what you do yeah um so apparently part of this event with the youth uh they had uh 
been they've been working with these young delegates right uh, to this to this yes. event some youth congress mm-hmm. of some kind yeah. uh and he he commended them for their seriousness in in addressing uh sort of the challenges that are facing young people today right, right? um he said that uh, drug use is one of the main problems facing young men and women however youths can also be easy prey to a different kind of drug Cultural alienation. <laughs> he, yeah, uh, the, the, that <laughs> enticing drug of alienation. Uh, oh, I can't, I can't <laughs> wait for my next hit of not being in contact with people. <laughs> what he doesn't get is that the damn thing is nothing but contact. Now, granted, it's not meaningful contact, and there are problems. It's not always with meaningful the way, contact. It's not always meaningful. It can be. It, um, oftentimes this is really, um, it's, it, it, I mean, there's a reason for taking a selfie and posting it online and it's the same reason why you take a picture of yourself looking good and a right. picture like, and you only ever show the positive things. You right. never really address some of the more challenging things of life. Like social media rarely has a, a strong open place for the negative. I don't know. I see it all the time. I see people writing on Facebook, I'm struggling with blank. I oh man, the depression's really hitting me today. And then other people jump in with support. Like I see that all the time. Well. So I'm 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 not with you or the pope on this. <laughs> I'm I'm straying away. Anywho, um but uh then he uh getting back to the old old man aspect of this thing. Yeah. He uh Uh, he's he's been feeling that young people are disconnected for, for quite some time. Apparently, he says uh, since many parents today are from a generation whose roots are not very strong, he encourages young people um, lost in the virtual world to engage in dialogue with their grandparents and the elderly instead, mm. because those are the ones they know they've got the roots. In they they deep. know what reality looks like, right? Not these kids. <laughs> they don't, they don't know reality because who's tied into the real life today. Mm-hmm. It's definitely the old people who can't figure out how to use the machines that they're complaining that the kids are using. Oh, I know. <laughs> I know. So, it's, uh, he's popey. Get off my lawn. <laughs> Love it. There you go. All right, I'm going to uh, talk to us a little bit about... There's, so, there's a congressional... There's a commission, a United States Commission on International Religious Freedom. Now, uh, this was... It sounds like something that would just have been created right now by by Trump or something, but it's not. It's been around since 1998. Uh, but they just appointed a new uh, a new member of the council, one Tony Perkins. Now, if you don't know that name, uh, that is the he's the head of the uh, the Family Research Council, which is a group that I believe has been. Uh, listed as a as a hate group by mm-hmm. the Southern Poverty Law Center because they hate the gays. Mm-hmm. And they love Jesus. They are Jesus people. Okay. And Perkins himself is a total Jesus nut. Um, and so he has been uh, appointed. Uh, he was nominated by Majority Leader, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. Um and he's he's just pleased as punch to be on it. Now, uh, this is a person, this would not be a big deal, but this is a person who has said in, a, in different uh, quotes, he said that religious liberties don't apply to Muslims. Oh. No, he actually I, said okay. that. Yeah. So when you're appointed to an international world religious liberty yeah. uh, thing, probably you should care about all the religions probably i don't know i mean if a religion has let's say more than a billion people mm-hmm. adherents mm-hmm. maybe they count i don't know mm. yeah uh mm. the, yeah he's he uh is not a happy character he is definitely one of these evangelicals who's just 
super stoked on Christianity and doesn't actually believe in other religions, I think. So, again, I think what we'll be seeing is a lot of uh, pushing for freedom for his people. Yeah, Christian liberty. Christian, religious liberty means Christian liberty. Well, of course it does. Definitely, definitely not Muslims and definitely not atheists. Oh, no, 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 no. Why? We don't get liberty. We don't even have a religion. How do you have religious liberty if you don't even have religion? Yeah. Yeah, fuck you. Yeah. Get a religion and then, and, 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 and by the way, better be Christian. Right. And, uh, and then you can enjoy Look, religious liberty. I don't care what religion it is, just as long as it has Jesus in it. <laughs> Pretty easy. Pretty cut and dry. You know, there are a lot of people in the world. Uh, well, to be honest, he probably doesn't even believe that. No. Because well, he, there, there's probably grand swaths of Christianity that he does not yeah. like very much. Mormons talk about Christianity, or Chris, Christ, Chris, they talk about Christ all the time. Barely. Well, they say the word. They say his name when yeah. they pray. Every time they pray, they <laughs> say in the name of Jesus Christ, right. amen. Yeah. Well, there you go. There you go. Well, that's, that's, that's great stuff, Dan. Uh-huh. Um, here's some, some, uh, well... Depends on your perspective. Uh, it's a tough sub- subject. I suppose some of it is great stuff. Mm. Uh, in that, um, uh, India has been um, really cracking down on uh, child abuse. Okay. Uh, there, there were some high profile um, uh, cases of uh, sexual abuse against children, mm-hmm. and abuse, and um, what's the right word? Um, exploitation mm-hmm. of children um, in India that that really kind of captured, I guess, the the national discussion. Right, and so they passed a law, uh, the Poxo Act. That's the Protection of Children from Sexual Offenses Act. Great, and and uh, I th- think it went through a year or two ago, uh-huh. and since then we've been. Uh, or the police have been able to start really trying the people or not convicting the people, not convicting, arresting people. There you go. And charging them for these crimes. Sure. And so therefore there's a better sense of like who is actually committing these offenses. Oh, something tells me I'm not going to be surprised by what you're going to say next. (laughs) Apparently (laughs) uh, there've been some priests involved. What? Shock and horror. Who ever heard of such a thing? <laughs> Nobody. That's who. Yeah. Um, unfortunately. Um, Someone in a trusted position of power, of religious power and piety? Yeah, I know. That's never happened. Um, there were, in a recent case, uh, three minor sisters um, were, uh, they were at kind of like this christian retreat thing it sounds like Mm. and during prayer time i don't like this story too much but a woman at this uh, at this center that they were at um received a revelation about one of the girls uh, who was 16 years old okay and she felt that, that, that she was hiding something from them she was she was just an observant and emotionally aware human being yeah right uh, there was no revelation here, but fine, whatever, whatever. Um, so she approaches the girl and she says um, that, that, well, the girl admitted that, um, that the three, that the, the three of them, these three sisters had been sexually abused at their school uh, and that they were also taken, which was a Christian school mm. and they were also taken to other Christian establishments and subjected to sexual abuse there oh, shit. as well. Oh my God. Um, and this is, this is what the, uh, it, the first sort of report into this investigation is saying. Um, and they call that, that initial report an FIR. Um, we have registered an FIR first information report. Uh, the allegations are very sensitive and we are probing them in detail, said a police officer. Don't say probing in a... <sighs> really? Phrasing. Dan. Phrasing. I... It's all I'm saying. <laughs> Everybody heard it. You didn't need to point it out. <laughs> Phrasing! 
Uh, anyway, uh, local authorities are canvassing uh, innocent people, um, particularly Kerala women. Oh, wait, no, no, no wait. Um, those who ran the... Uh, yeah, so anyway, they're they're really looking into this and they're trying to find um, how deep it goes into the diocese. Mm. Apparently there's an asylum that they're looking at uh. where it, the, the priests apparently prey on uh, the people who are locked up there. Yeah. Um, anyway. Pray uh, on as opposed to pray for. Exactly. Which is what they should be doing. Right. Um, yeah. One harmful. The other one does nothing. Right. Um, yeah. And then, of course, it just goes through. I mean, the, the article goes into all these different um, cases. Uh, a mother who was forcing her daughter into, you know basically prostitution and that kind of stuff. But, they, but they're really starting to find um, a lot of cases and trying to clean it all up. Yeah. And uh, so there you, there you have it. Yeah, there you go. Uh, that will be, that'll search, that'll be solved in just a short amount of time, obviously. <laughs> India will be the safest place in the world it'll, for children. It'll, it'll be, it'll be abuse free in no time flat. <laughs> Now that they've got the laws in place, that's great. Uh, no, I, I, hey. They're, but they're at, going for it. At least people are getting arrested. At least it's yeah. actually happening. Yes. So good for them. Uh, I'm going to, we need to talk about it. It's sort of the biggest thing that happened in the world in our uh, oeuvre this week, <laughs> which is. Uh, what, what was that word? Oeuvre. <laughs> Do you have to say it that way? You want me to say Irv? What do you want me to say? Oov. Uver. Uver. In our <laughs> in our Uver. Anyway, uh Oof. there was this whole thing about the US moving their embassy in oh. Israel from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Yes. Uh which will fix all of the problems in the Middle East, I'm pretty sure. Uh that will happen. Mm-hmm. Um but I just wanted to talk just briefly. Uh, obviously, like you, this is not a politics show, and uh, I just wouldn't even know where to start to talk about the politics of this, or the or or even the historical significance of this. Um, you know, maybe if we had seven hours and fourteen guests with PhDs, we could sort of start to scratch the surface mm -hmm. of this problem. But I did want to talk about sort of who was there and why, mm. uh, because I think that that's kind of an issue that uh, that bears examination. Mm. Um, mm. Okay. Because, you know, the U.S. is like beyond the political there are all of these people in the U.S. who have these religious reasons why this uh, should happen and you know, one one of my most my most right wing conservative religious friend on Facebook posted like thirty things about this. Mm -hmm. She has nothing to do with. She, I mean, she's you know she doesn't have anything to do with uh, Israel. Like, if she weren't an evangelical Christian, yeah, she would have no reason to care about this other than like it's f how it affects sort of world. Uh, the stability of, of that region or whatever. But mm -hmm. she doesn't give a fuck about the stability of that region. No. What she cares about is Jesus yeah. is going to come to this place. So Jesus, so uh, the kind of, so basically uh, Jews are also thrilled about this. Christians are sort of s secret thrilled about this. <laughs> Jews are thrilled about it because they believe that it's their uh, rightful the the uh, the area that is known as Israel and some areas well beyond those bounds are their rightful sort of birthright homeland right blah 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 both in a political sense and in a sort of fulfillment of prophecy sense like right. their messiah revolves around this uh, you know the coming of their messiah revolves around somehow having Jerusalem or whatever but the christians also have designs on this. And oh, yeah. I don't know how the Jews are okay with it because they know that the Christians are there because when, because theoretically when the Jews get Jerusalem, then Jesus will come and then it will all be Christian again. 
Like, yeah. the, then the Christians will just take it. Well, the Christians are basically useful fools in this I, whole thing. Yeah, well, to, right. the, to the Jews, yeah. yeah. But, but vice versa, too. The Jews oh, are yeah. just useful no. fools to the Christians yeah. in this point. It's so, and I think the Christians are kind of sort of more than happy for the Jews and the Muslims to be battling it out mm. over this thing because they're just sitting back and waiting steeple fingered <laughs> until, <laughs> G, you know, you guys destroy yourselves, Jesus comes and then it's ours. Right. Which, yeah, it's, it's crazy. I mean, and, and, and the, <laughs> the, it's, equally crazy here's so i just i the other part of this story that i wanted to mention is our own mittens joseph romney uh Ugh. stepped into the fray I, he took a stand on something which is great when he does that because usually his stand is like i believe this unless anyone tells me otherwise unless right. you'll vote for me if i say something else and also i am a patriots fan right up until i'm a jazz fan or what you know celtics but anyway <laughs> It's a sports thing. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell us more sports. Yeah. Uh, so Mitt decided to wade in and sa- and was mad because the Christian that was brought in to pray over to mm. to give the prayer at the U.S. Embassy. Why is there a prayer at the U.S. Embassy? Nobody knows. But I mean, like literally, <laughs> there shouldn't be, but there was one, and they brought in uh, one lovely uh, Robert Jeffress. We've talked mm, about him. He's yeah. a real peach. Yeah. Um, uh, very much a, a, again, sort of along the same lines as uh, as Tony Perkins that I was talking about before. Uh, Jeffress has said many a nasty thing about mm. people of other religions. Well, one of the things that he said was about Mormons, and that caught Mr. Mr. Uh, Romney's attention. Right. So Mittens tweeted and said... He he actually said the right thing, which is that Robert Jeffress shouldn't give the prayer. Right. Um, he said, Robert Jeffress says, quote, you can't be saved by being a Jew. And, quote, Mormonism is a heresy from the pit of hell, unquote. He said the same about Islam. So he's tweeting about stuff that Jeffress actually said mm-hmm. and pointing out that, yeah, maybe that guy isn't the best guy to just to be sent like. Surely somewhere in these United States, you can find a pastor who's never said a fucking dickhead thing about the Jews when they go and, and about Muslims when they go and pray at a thing in that's already controversial in Jerusalem. Wait, 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 wait. You think you can find a pastor? I think somewhere in this country there's somebody. <laughs> I think if they're preaching the gospel, <laughs> it's pretty hard, Dan. It's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Uh, but yeah, but of course Romney would have said absolutely nothing if the Mormon bit hadn't been in there. If he right. had, to, if he had badmouthed Jews and Muslims, right? Which would, which is the real problem here, right? Romney wouldn't have said a word. But it was the Mormons. But don't talk about my crazy weird cult, right? How dare you, right. sir? <laughs> How dare you, indeed? For calling a spade a spade. Yeah, well, I mean, it's not like Jeffress has anything good to say that's that's of any value anyway, but Right. But yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't think Mormonism is a heresy from the pit of hell. I don't think that's true. No, I think it's a uh it's, nasty damaging cult that needs to be wiped off the face of the planet, along with all of the <laughs> other religions. <laughs> along with all the other religions. Right. They're not necessarily as cultish, though. I would say Jeffress is probably just as culty. Maybe. Anyway. I think in terms of control and authority, uh, when I think about how Mormonism qualifies in my mind. But uh, nonetheless, I I digress. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, Dan. Yeah. Um, we mentioned uh, earlier, summer, summer is uh, upon us yes. soon enough, which also means uh, traditionally that gay pride is upon us yes um, get out your suntan lotion because yeah. you are going to be dancing mm-hmm. in the in, uh, dancing a, in the streets uh, in the streets on a float whatever. on a float speedo wearing, wearing boa very little yeah. glitter sure right 
Sure. You get the picture. You, yeah. If you haven't been to a gay pride, one must only imagine. Yeah. What would gay men do? <laughs> and women. If, and lesbians yeah. left to their own devices, <laughs> right? In the streets of, a, of, a, of major cities. Come what's, to, what's going to happen? Come to Salt Lake Pride, by the yeah. way. It's fun. It is fun. It's actually quite family friendly. It, it's 100% family friendly. Yeah. And it's it's one of the funnest yeah. prides in the land. Yeah. Well, uh, I want to tell the story of a uh, pride celebration that was uh, going on this last week. Oh. Uh, in uh, Lebanon. Oh. Beirut Pride. Sure. Um, Lebanon it, last year was the first Arab country to actually hold a gay pride. If you can call it an Arab country. I mean, I guess it's Arab. Yeah. Arab. Sure. Mm-hmm. It's 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 religiously diverse, mm-hmm. uh, but but largely ethnically Arab. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Go on. Um, the uh, the so that that went off last year mm. happened, mm-hmm. and uh, this year second year of Beirut Pride, awesome. Uh, yeah. The uh, the organizer uh, Hadi Damien is his name. Okay. Uh, he was taken uh, to a police station overnight oh dear. after um, security services came to one of the events. Okay. This was fairly early on in what was planned to be a nine-day event. Sure. Um, they, were, uh, they were at a reading of a, of a play. Okay. That was, uh, it was about, I can't remember exactly what it was about, but it was gay-themed, of course. Gay play. Gay- <laughs> Yeah. Um Mr. uh Damien uh says he was asked to sign a pledge that he would cancel what was left of the week. Um what? That, that was the condition uh for his release. Uh the these police officers uh apparently even though Lebanon is more tolerant than other it's a pretty uh, forward-thinking country for the region. Yeah, um, for other Arab countries, um, especially with regard to LGBT folk. Right. Uh, it technically still is, um, well... Illegal? It, yes, or at least there is a law on the books that is used um, against members of the LGBT community. Sure. That says, the phrasing is will not be surprising to anybody, Um the penal code punishes quote any sexual intercourse contrary to the order of nature, <laughs> right? Which has been interpreted to right, of course, right? The, because we because, know what they're talking about, because, right? Because the people who are going to be interpreting this law are uh, are biologists <laughs> and know exactly how nature works. Anywho, uh, judges, uh, some judges have been uh, actually challenging this uh, part of the the law, and. Uh, uh, I guess there was a, a case back in 2014, a judge ruled that sex between a transgender woman and a cisgender man uh, could not be perceived as unnatural. Interesting. Um, another judge last year declared that homosexuals have the right to have human or intimate relationships with any people they choose uh, without discrimination on the basis of their sexual orientation. Huh. Um, so th- things are... Th- Things are changing. Yeah. Things seem to be going in general in the right direction. Um, but it's kind of that a case where the police still feel free to harass the community. Sure, sure. And that ultimately is probably what this was. Well, I Who knows wanna... where they received their instructions from, but they definitely right. felt like this was something that they could shut down. I just want to congratulate that neck of the world for reaching the 70s. Yeah. Great job. Yeah, I know. It's kind of amazing. <laughs> uh, or is it the 60s? It's maybe the 60s. Yeah. Uh, it's, I mean, the, this, let's is, see, the, this the, is Stonewall. The Stonewall happening. riots were in 68. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. And then there was the Summer of Love in 69. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I believe that's how it all goes. Um, anyway, the, uh, yeah, the he was warned... That uh, if he did not cancel the event, so Damien was was warned that he would be referred to an investigative judge who would, quote, interrogate me on the basis of articles pertaining to the incitement to immorality Ah. and to the breach of public morality 
for coordinating the activities. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's a shame because it, it sounded did like, he, so did he cancel the events? He did. Uh, he did. He did cancel the events. Um, that's when you come out of the jail and you say, I'm canceling all of these events, but if y'all want to do them, go right ahead. Yeah. I'm not, I am no longer coordinating these events. Well, and it sounds like these folks know how to gay. Right? Oh, yeah. um, the first, the sort of the, the kickoff event was a brunch. Sure. Sure. They've they've that, got it down. That means right? gay in every language. Yeah. There was a nice brunch. The theme of it uh, was a celebration of parents who had not rejected their children oh. uh, when they came out as homosexuals. Oh. And was, uh, um, yeah. That's touching. Now, the rest of the events sound a little boring. But <laughs> well, it's not like they're going to go like full naked go-go dancing. <laughs> it's still Lebanon. Talks and uh, readings mm -hmm. were the main events for the for the sure. following nine days. But you know, hey, that that is a huge start. It's, I, it's huge. Uh, you know, it's. I, I hope there's a, a third annual uh, Beirut Pride next yeah. year. I hope that they're able to work this out um, because obviously they you just know, need what they need to do is they need to take the uh, the sort of um, the Occupy Wall Street model and have no one be the central organizer. Decentralize. Just yeah. decentralize it so yeah. that it just sort of happens a little more organically and nobody knows who to arrest. Right. I don't Not know. Not a bad idea. Who knows if that would work. Anyway, yeah. uh, go Beirut. I know a, 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 a Lebanese gay man. He's he's lovely. Mm. Anyway, um, I w and I was surprised to hear him talk about how gay friendly he found Lebanon. And, oh wow! And and uh, Beirut. Oh, be. very interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Um, I'm going to tell a story to wrap things up here uh, about a screening of Avengers: Infinity War. Oh, now uh, have you seen it? No. Okay. Is this? I'm okay. not going to spoil anything, ladies and gentlemen. Fear not. Okay. But just know that at the end of this movie, people who are very into the comic books and these movies, this whole series. It's, it's emotional. The end of this movie is emotional. Oh my! Uh, so everybody's feeling feelings. Okay. Uh, by the end of this thing, they all die. Again, I'm not talking about what happens in the film. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Because there are people who haven't seen it, and, and well, I haven't seen it either. Right. And so we're not going to. Anyway, people are feeling some feelings. Okay. And. Uh, and also, let's just say that there is a history in this country where people don't always, when people in the United States of America, foreigners will understand this, when we're all in a crowd together and something starts to go really weird with one person, we get a little sketchy. Okay. Some dude decides at the end of a screening, this was in California, some dude decides at the end of a screening of uh, Avengers to stand up in front of the whole theater and start spouting off about Jesus. <laughs> he's going to preach to everybody. And nice. about the time he says, quote, so something along the lines of, if you were to die tonight, would your passage to heaven be guaranteed? Everybody fucking panics. They're assuming that this is a gunman who's going to actually start shooting. Oh, my and God. And people start screaming and running. <gasps> One woman jumps over the side rail of a thing and falls 20 feet and injures herself and then gets trampled. Oh, like, my God. Dude incites a fucking riot. He yelled fire in a crowded theater. He did. Because Jesus is the same thing. Yeah. Unbelievable. Oh, my God. Yeah. Literally... literally he thought he was doing this nice thing of like, first of all, fuck you, right. because we're here for a different thing, and you have never in your life gotten a convert from doing this. Right. No one in the history of the universe has ever gone, <laughs> now what's that guy on about? I should hear what he has to say at the end of my movie. He seems like my kind of crazy. He's got his shit together mm -hmm. for sure. Whatever he's selling, I'm buying. Never has never been said. It's never worked. So, like, why do crazies do it then? So that they can sort of report to Jesus that they did that they did a thing. 
that they're that they're the crazy prophet the, the, in the desert. They're just marking off numbers. They're just I well I've ministered to five hundred people in that theater. Dear Lord Jesus, I I count them all. None of them listened to a word I said, but count it. Oh, how wicked the world is! They won't listen to me. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, okay. uh, yeah, he was he was arrested uh, and cited, um, basically for say for. Uh, what was it? what was the actual thing? He was because um, like police showed up in riot gear, like police with assault rifles showed up. Well, yeah, we take it serious when someone starts crazy shouting in a theater. Because we, I mean, well, and the management of the theater, seeing people running out and hearing the clamor, they had no cho- like, yeah, like not only did they have no choice, they had nothing to go on, right, except for the reaction of the crowd. Yeah. That is a nine one one send Get, the SWAT team immediately yeah. scenario. Yeah, exactly. Holy fuck. Yeah. They so <laughs> no. Yeah. Oh God. And people injured. Nobody died. Nobody died. Nobody got trampled to death. But a little a little bit of uh, a little bit of injury. <sighs> and uh and yeah, he's been charged with using quote offensive language likely to cause a violent reaction. Which is a misdemeanor. I love that it's Christian preaching. Yeah. That's falling under that. Yeah. That definition. Uh, yeah. That's great. Yeah. Let's arrest more people on that charge. <laughs> uh, well, kids, uh, if you have any offensive language that you'd like to let us know about, uh, you can write to us, podcast at thankgodimatheist.com. Or you can call and leave us a voicemail message. The telephone number is 424 666 Eight four four two. That's right. Go to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash TGI Atheist, and click that like button. And while you're there, search for the TGIA Members Only Lounge and request to join. It's a closed group, but that's what keeps it civil and awesome. Amazing. Yeah. Dan. Yes, sir. Uh, it's time for something that hasn't happened in a long time. Uh-oh. One of our favorite things. Here it comes. Pat Robertson. It's a patty break, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, and we- it's our favorite segment of his show as well. Oh, yeah. The- it's it's when the listeners write in to him. Mm-hmm. The viewers, I guess. He's got a TV show. And they He's write so in. fancy. Because you know what? They need help. Mm-hmm. They don't understand what's happening. And he, that... 4,000 year old Methuselah fucker uh, is going to expound the world to them. He knows mm. all. He sees all. He is Zoltan. Yeah. Zoltar? I don't remember. Uh, I don't know. But they call the segment Your Questions Honest Answers. <laughs> honest. Honest. It, they're, not, they're not even correct. They're just honest. <laughs> all right. It's time for your questions, some honest answers. Let's start with Kathy. She says, I believed I was healed by God, but my sickness came back. Why would God heal you and then give you the ailment back after you praised him for healing you? Pat? Well, you remember Jesus gave a teaching about a demon. He said, you know, after the demon is cast out of a person, he goes into arid land seeking someplace, and then uh, he goes back to the house that he left, and he finds it swept and garnished, and he brings seven more worse than himself. Uh, so, uh, disease, you know, has a certain life to it. Some some diseases, uh, they're like like animate creatures, and they want to go back to the house where they left. And you have to fill that that void with something. And that's what the teaching was. You have to be filled with the Spirit of God, uh, and that disease is gone. But you, you somehow are welcoming it back. It isn't God putting it back. It, the, the, the disease wants to come back, and you receive it. Mm-hmm. So you have to begin to stand against these things. Yeah. So that's all I can say. Yeah. Amen. Well, Amen. well that's just medical science. <laughs> Does he have a just, medical degree? Because he knows a oh, lot. Oh, yeah. Just these traveling diseases. Right. Well, in, just in coming, demon coming form. around. Yeah. I, are are viruses demons? Is that what it is? Or uh, he doesn't know. Cancer demons and AIDS demons. It's all demons. Yeah. And boy, you get rid of it. But if you don't fill that house quick, mm-hmm. 
Back they come. Yeah. You better <laughs> fill that house with Jesus. Fill it with Jesus. Get rid of the disease. Fill it with Jesus. Je- Jesus or diseases. Those are your choices. <laughs> Jesus or diseases. I'm going to write a book now. <laughs> That is that is now trademarked and copyrighted by me. Jesus or diseases, I'm going to be a millionaire. <laughs> Anywho, uh, yeah, that's uh, what great advice he has, which is, oh, your disease coming back. That's your fault. Clearly, Dan, that is you being not good, not Jesusy enough. So yeah. uh, fuck you, and uh, pray better next time, dummy. How does the rest of the non-Jesus world work in his <laughs> mind? Right? Like, they have to re- rely diseases on... come and go in the same ways that they do here through treatment and medicine and whatnot. <laughs> and like... But in Jesus land... But in Jesus land, it, it's different. It's different right in, unless it isn't. Until it's inconvenient for it to be different. Until somebody super holy gets a disease and then it's like, well... Sometimes God works in mysterious ways. Sometimes you just get a virus. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that he falls ill. He's going to rely on the best of modern science. Right. Yeah. Modern medicine when it, getting him all fixed up. When his cancer comes or whatever, it's it's that's definitely not going to be a lack of Jesus that that caused that. That's no. just going to be, you know, mo- medicine, it, you know, bodies are just machines and they get these uh these things sometimes and sometimes things go wrong. Things, sometimes things go wrong. Yeah. Yeah. That's how that works. Uh, we have some people that wrote into us, that called into us. But before we do, we do I want to, to touch on something, which is that we need some help. Oh, yeah. Uh, we lost half a star on our iTunes rating. Oh, my God. Ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Um, we've, yeah. Here's the this thing. This actually hits hard because we have been a five-star podcast for six years yeah five stars on itunes this is hard to do yeah but we but we dropped half a star and mostly it's from people here's what it is look you don't have to love our show i understand it sometimes some people right. we're not for everybody right but most of our but one listen star listen to the show please yeah <laughs> before rating us yeah and that's the problem uh most of our one star reviews which are the things that are st- that that start to kill you are things like this this is uh, a review on iTunes titled Inappropriate. And the the uh, the review that they've written is Both Thumbs Down, Inappropriate, Change Your Title. Ladies and gentlemen, the Christians don't like our title. Right. And they're they're giving us they're they're ruining our rating because right. of it. There right. are others. Uh uh Eternal Torment, Who Cares is the title of this review. They may think they're funny, but really just a couple of guys that believe life came that believe life came from a rock, which is what they have for brains. Waste of time unless you are both liberal and blind. I like that one. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> I like I, I mean, I find them funny. Uh-huh. Uh there was one that was like that said just another snobbish angst theist podcast as there aren't enough of them already apparently oh my god uh do you guys really have to look down on others just because they choose to believe in something look you guys never listened to our show right we know that you didn't listen to our show you saw the word atheist and you one starred it for that right now we are not advocating ladies and gentlemen that you go out and one star christian shows don't do that no, but let it, Joel Osteen have his little show. But if, yeah, his cute little thing that he does. <laughs> but if you guys are, haven't rated us on iTunes or Stitcher or the, the pod yeah. thing of your choice, right. it would be super helpful if you would just give us a quick five-star review. Yeah. You don't, have, you don't have to leave a review if you don't want to, just a rating. If you want to leave a review, that can be nice, too. It sort of drowns out the other reviews. Yeah. But really, it just takes a minute. You're already you're on the app that does it right now. I uh, I so say just, Dan. Yeah. I say that uh, when we get our five stars back on iTunes, we need to throw a party. We'll throw a party. We we currently have seven hundred and sixty five ratings. I mm-hmm. think we need eight hundred minimum. But let's shoot for higher. Let's go for a thousand. Let's go for a thousand. We want a thousand reviews ratings on here. Yeah. And by the way. 
if you're hearing this and you think, yeah, I'll do that, and you decide to give us anything less than five stars, fuck you! <laughs> no! <laughs> we, I get it. We may not be, like, the highest quality show on that you listen to, <laughs> and you may want to sort of be honest about it. and Like, your impulse is good to, like, sort of, you know, we're four stars to you. <laughs> Fine. No! That's not how this works in the real world. You right. leave us five stars. Right. If you want us to stick around at all, if you want to support your community at all, sorry, you don't be honest, you leave the five stars. <laughs> I, uh, right? I'm just going to let that lie. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Matter of fact, if you have left a four-star review, go back and you revise that shit. You revise it up to five stars. I mean, the show's okay. I like it. It's really good. You know, there are some things that I don't like about it. It's not my favorite show. You know, I, I have my a few little minor quips and quibbles. On the whole, I like it. Five stars. That's a five star review. Yeah. Sorry. I know. <laughs> Believe me, I get it. I have the impulse. Like, this is why I don't even take. Like when 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 companies want me to do just a two minute uh, survey about uh -huh. my, my the customer service, I won't do it because I want. <laughs> To be honest, uh -huh. but if I say, I know, because I've been in this position on the other side of it, if mm -hmm. I say anything bad at all, like if the person was terrible, mm -hmm. I'll do it, because right. fuck that person. Right. But if they were good, but not great, and then I go in and I'm like, customer service was, you know, a four out of five, helpfulness was a four out of five, they get, like, they can lose money. Mm -hmm. That person can be fucking, like, can lose money on that. Fuck that. Right. So I just don't even take it. Right. Because I'm... But in this case, ladies and gentlemen, the way you support your fellow atheists is just... It doesn't matter. Just do a five-star review. It doesn't matter. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's move it's on. It's not that four and a half stars isn't awesome. Yeah, I know. But but we need the five stars. And, and to be honest, we know how many people listen to this show. Yeah. We can get... 250 people 200. we should be able to easily get 250 people to show up and just and give just, us a, just a five click star. five stars yeah. that's all you have to do yeah okay we're done we won't <laughs> pester you anymore people wrote into us some of our lovely five star listeners have written into us and called in uh tj wrote in said uh now this is a reference to um you know we were talking a couple weeks ago about the louisiana uh Louisiana, some some lawmakers trying to modify the Louisiana law so that it didn't have uh, um, bestiality stuff on it. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. Because, or rather, they were trying to lift out the bestiality stuff specifically so that they could eventually, probably, so that the end game is to get the uh, unnatural uh, sex acts off the books, oh, yeah. which are basically supposed to be anti-sodomy laws. Right. Um, they're not enforceable because the Supreme court has, has, uh, ruled against that. Right. But they're fighting, getting them off the books. Well, T <laughs> so here's what TJ said. Uh, guys, you noted that the Christian right in Louisiana objected to changes in their crimes against nature law and that resisting changes to a non-functioning law that was valid, that was vacated by SCOTUS, uh, didn't make sense. It actually makes perfect sense and the rea and is really dark and scary. The Christian right is convinced that Trump uh, was put in place by their God for one purpose, to change the Supreme Court's makeup. They are fervently praying every single day for Clarence Thomas and Ruth Bader Ginsburg to tip over or otherwise step down so Trump can appoint hard right evangelical friendly conservatives in their place. Um, Clarence Thomas is pretty... Yeah, just friendly, but but, but yeah. we get the point. Uh, then, uh, then Louisiana and other red states can challenge the court's previous decisions that they don't like, such as gay marriage and sodomy, and get those positions reversed. Then they would be free to persecute any number of people they don't like. Uh, this thought is even more terrifying, considering the horrible person, uh, that horrible person, Brian Fisher's recent trial balloon that says only. Only Christians have First Amendment rights. He is at the vanguard of the Dominionist movement, a group real, of really awful and scary people mm -hmm. who want America to be a Christian reflection of the Islamic State. Uh, they, this may sound like hyperbole, but it isn't. They actually have websites that state their intentions openly. 
While it's fun to make fun of these people, we need to remember that elections have real world consequences. This is true. Yeah. I, I, I mean, that's probably true. The reason that they're fighting taking these things off the books is because they believe that one day they'll be able to enforce them again. That, uh, that makes total sense to me. Anyway. And just the symbol in the meantime. Oh, yeah. They love having you know, it up there. They know that. Yeah. yeah anyway. There are still states that have in their constitution that atheists can't hold office, even though... Well, fuck them. I mean, that's not enforceable either, but... Yeah. They just love having it there. It's just fun to look at. It's just cute. It's fun. It feels like a security blanket a little bit. <laughs> like, no, we can't enforce it, but we, we know it's there. It feels there. so good. It feels so good. It's there. All right. Um, all right. Well, I have a voicemail I want to play uh, from a listener who's responding to essentially a question... One of us asked, maybe it was me, um, about whether or not, or, or about how long the, the LDS church has been uh, uh, calling people to be janitors oh. instead of actually paying for <laughs> instead janitors. Instead of paying people. Okay. And so uh, he, he, has, uh, he has at least, um, he can take us back at least so far. Okay. Hey guys, this is uh, Willie down here in Southern Utah. I was listening to your last show where you're talking about... Uh, volunteer labor of people being called to clean churches and whatnot. Well, back in 2006, my uh, 68-year-old mother, who uh, kind of had a hard time getting around, and my 74-year-old father were both called to their ward in Santa Clara to be custodians. So they've been doing it for a while now. I don't know about anything uh, sooner than that, but 2006, it was definitely happening. And I even want to recall them even bringing the cleaning supplies. I can't verify that, but they might have. Anyway, love the show. Keep it up, guys. Talk to you later. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I give you the Mormon church. Uh, yes. Yeah. Indeed. They uh, they know how to utilize their people. Yeah. And taking advantage of elderly believers. <laughs> we don't have anything else to do, I suppose. Yeah, but if you're if you're having trouble getting around, maybe not manual labor. Maybe yeah, physical labor is not where you put those people. Well, they're still doing it. It's been twelve years. Oh my god! And did you, I mean, and that last bit about you know the possibility that they actually even have to bring their own cleaning supplies. <laughs> yeah, of course. They like do. what a bunch of fucking cheap bastards. Because because it's not like they're a multi billion dollar uh, organization. This institution is just throwing money around building these temples where there aren't even members. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There they you go. Ugh. There what you the go. Fuck. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. For, thanks uh, for calling in with that. Uh, Cassie wrote in, hey, guys, uh, just listening to the new episode and wanted to chime in. Uh, you remember, Franklin, that I believe you and Chris, uh, by the way, thanks a lot, Chris, for coming on and helping out. Hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. You and Chris talked uh, last week about something that happened in Missouri. Uh, and you had a little bit of a conversation about the pronunciation of that state. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, whether it was Missouri or Missouri. <laughs> uh, so Cassie says, just listening to the new episode, wanted to chime in. I was born in Missouri, but moved away as a child by the grace of reason. <laughs> so I like to think I have a little authority here. I've found that to have the stereotypical Missouri accent, uh, you must have you must be two things. Born and raised in Missouri or a shared border state, and above the age of 50. Oh. Pretty much anyone from Missouri with those two things under their belt will say Missouri. Uh, but anyone with the luck of, of a blind hog finding an acorn will lack one or both of those things and therefore speak like they can string more than seven syllables together without their head, uh, with, without them's heads hurting. <laughs> Just thought I'd let you know. Well, that's fantastic. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So it is both, I guess, but only Missouri if you're an old country boy. Yeah. There's a town in Oklahoma uh -huh. spelled like Miami uh -huh. that's pronounced by all locals. And I mean, you will be corrected if you say Miami. It's Miami. <laughs> <laughs> and the locals will call Miami, Florida... Miami. Okay. It's not that sequence of letters that mm -hmm. is Miami. It's just... It's just their town is called Miami. Well, people in Hurricane Utah... 
They do the same thing. Know exactly what's hitting. You know, if if something happens to the East Coast, it's a hurricane, Mm -hmm. and they'll talk about it in Hurricane. Yeah, Yeah. spelled the same. Everybody's weird. (laughs) Everybody's weird. Uh, So there you go. Uh, If uh, if you guys would like to write into us or do whatever, you can do that. I guess we have some folks to thank. Oh, we do have people to thank. Thank you, Dan. It has been a a hot minute. So you thank all all of you new patrons. Thank you so much for your patience uh, while we were all uh, gallivanting all over. Yeah, but we're back. Heck and back. We are back. We are back. So here 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 you are. And so it's quite the list. Oh, hurrah. People have been active um, signing up on Patreon. Uh, we have a bunch of new faithful uh, listeners oh, of the great. show. We have Leslie to thank, Sojo, Adam, Simon, Mitten, and Jason. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, welcome to the to the uh, th- the the throngs of the the faithful. Uh huh. Um, we also have a new venerable listener. Ooh, Barry. Thank you, Barry. Thank you very much, Barry. And we have a new saint, a new Ooh. sainted listener uh, by the name of Kate. Bless you, so Saint thank Kate. Thank you, Kate. Saint Kate. I love yeah. it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, these are people who have decided that uh, they would like uh, an ad free version of our show. Mm-hmm. Uh, they receive uh, access with, so no ads. They have access to the Frank, some of them have access to the Frank and Dan Diaries, which mm-hmm. is a. a Usually a weekly thing, um, just yeah. some bonus content for mm-hmm. y'all. Yeah. Um, but more importantly, they 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 support the show and sort of help help us to keep it going and all yeah. those sort of things. So if you'd like to count yourself among them, if you would like to be uh, a a a winner, the way they are, yeah, you can go to thankgodimatheist dot com and just click on the support tab. Absolutely, and, uh, and that's helpful. Oh, you know what? I think we have somebody also to thank. Who who went the uh, the PayPal route? The PayPal route. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about which that. is also legitimate. Totally. It's uh, it's, uh, it's it's so when you go to our website, there's actually two options, and they're they're sort of presented side by side. Yeah. And you can choose to go either the PayPal direction, or you can click over on the right hand side. There's a banner that says Patreon. Yeah. Oh, and Mark. No, oh, Mark. So, Mark, thank you so much. Uh, Mark has, has done a, a... He's now a faithful member as well. So, thank Fantastic. you so much uh, to all of you. Yes. And uh, and also, we have one more person. There's thing. always our top donor, our Lord and Savior, the Archangela herself. Angela! Thank you so much, Angela. And thank all of you for all, all of your help. And uh, may the blessings of everyone... Uh, of 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 the universe be upon you. Amen. Dan. Yeah. Ah, uh, this weather, Dan. Oh my God, this weather. So, uh, and and not just this weather, but like, especially this time of year. Ugh. It's just. When when the leaves have mm. finally come back on the trees, you know, I just I got back from Canada where, you know, their seasons are behind. They're not good at seasons in Canada. <laughs> They're really quite poor at it. They, yeah. they forget to do the whole like they skip over a couple of them. Yeah. They keep it cold t- way too long. <laughs> anyway, I came back and the leaves were on the trees here yeah, and the flowers are in bloom and everyone's sneezing. Yeah, uh, it's been rough, actually. It's been a it's been a rough allergy mm-hmm. year, but you know we have mountains surrounding us. We can be we can be up in the mountains in no time. Here's the thing. Do you remember the moment when Diana Nyad, who's the swimmer who swam across from Cuba to the to Florida, without even a shark cage? Right. She went on Oprah. She was, a, she, I think she was in her sixties at the time. She's just an awesome. Yeah. She's an atheist. She went on Oprah. And Oprah said, she, she, so Diana and I had said, I'm an atheist. And Oprah was like, ah, well, what, but what, what about awe? Don't you believe, don't you feel a sense of awe and wonder at the universe? Mm. And she was like, yeah. And Oprah was like, well, then I don't think you're an atheist. <laughs> Fuck Oprah. Fuck you, Oprah. Fuck Oprah. Like, 
I'm. Can we actually just pivot and just talk about how awful Oprah is? <laughs> like, actually, you know what? There, I'd be happy to do that. There's a whole episode of not a whole episode, but a how to heretic. Uh-huh. We, we we shredded her. Oh, so okay. I will refer our listeners to an episode <laughs> okay. of the how to heretic. Well, okay. find the one that's about Oprah. Who, by the way, do you know what her given birth name was? Harpo. No, that's. <laughs> it's worse than that. What? Orpa. No way. Yeah. Well, she improved it a little bit. Yeah. But it still doesn't give her the right. Um, <laughs> but the point is, uh, Christians seem to think mm. that awe, that a sense of wonder about the universe, about yeah. about life, comes from God. But see, yeah, and I think that, and I think that they limit themselves. Actually, and this is kind of the, my new newer thought on the whole thing. Um, is that by they look at the stars and look at like images that come back from the Hubble telescope or whatever, or they go to the Grand Canyon or they go on a lovely walk in the mountains. Right. right? And they look at it and they go, wow, how did God create all of this? It's so amazing. It's just God is miracle so after miracle right? after miracle. And so it's just this, this guy who just like, eh, this is what I do. I put stars in the sky. It's I put appreciated rocks in the mountain, right? It's appreciated in kind of the same way that we appreciate the work of an artist. Yeah, yeah. Like holy crap! What a grander ama- scale, perhaps? What an amazing craftsman yes, God exactly. turned out to be. Yeah, and I think that when I now look at the universe, you know, mm. twenty years after, you know, yeah. Um, accepting the, the the fact that Except, there is no God. Accepting uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson as your Lord and Savior. <laughs> Indeed. Um, well, he did a great job with that cosmos okay. on Fox. So, See, uh, partially. I was, I was lukewarm on it. Pa- par- partially. <laughs> I'll give it to him. He got They got that on primetime yeah, television sure. in this country. Sure. The most uh, atheist thing that... <laughs> has ever appeared on Fox television. Yeah. Anyhow, um, so, I look at the universe now, and it's, it's unbelievable, right? In not truly an unbelievable way, in a f- yeah. perfectly believable way. It's credible. But it's, but it's, it's so, it's amazing. Astounding. Yeah. That, this has happened right well, that that the, the the laws of nature and and just ha- that th- th- this can happen well and what's fun about our perspective is that we can i mean obviously we can still appreciate the grandeur we uh-huh. can appreciate the beauty <coughs> but we don't have to but what we don't have we're not locked into it all being wonderful Mm. there's some bullshit out there mm. there's some nastiness out there you know what i mean like nebula yeah fuck a nebula <laughs> oh fuck a nebula no nope. <laughs> <laughs> actually i love nebulae but but like you know there's there's like yeah there's still flies that like burrow into people's eyeballs and sure and sure stuff. sure sure and we don't have to say that all of god's creation is beautiful right you know there there's still kansas and that's <laughs> ugly as sin <laughs> But there's the rest of the world. There's yeah. places on Earth that are astounding. Yeah. And it's so funny. I have believers ask me multiple times. People have asked me, don't you believe in something bigger than yourself? And I point to a mountain and I go, everything's bigger than me. Right. I'm fucking tiny. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah, there's an ant that's smaller than I am. But oh, my God. There are suns and planets and fucking everything's bigger than me. Right. And that's then that's the, the flip side uh, that I that I, I honestly think that has to be lost on believers because it was the side of it that I I felt sort of the smallness of man. Mm. But when you really think about like us on this little planet. Yeah. In this corner of the galaxy and the 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 volume of galaxies yeah right that 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 there is this sense of um my god 
<laughs> how precious this is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, you can sort of spiral into a bit of an existential thing with that, too. Yeah, you can. Because it's meaningless. Yeah. Because we're just, you know, atoms bumping against atoms. Oh, yeah. And I'm fine with that. I've, I've come to terms. You have to come to peace with, with that. that. You, you have know? to. But, and the thing is that, like, I think we appreciate wonder and awe much better than they do because their whole system mm-hmm. is designed to believe that they're special. Mm-hmm. God created all of these things for me, right. for us. Isn't that amazing? We were created in God's image right. because we're special. Right. Specialer than all the rest of the universe. Right. Except we're not. Right. And this is just, it's, it's just, it's remarkable and it's amazing that the, the randomness of the universe, which led to a whole bunch of just weird, bizarre shit, mm-hmm. happened to also lead to us. Yeah. And we're pretty weird and bizarre, too. Yeah. I, and, it, and, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty stunning. And, and one of the things that I liked when you pitched the idea that you and I would talk about this today mm-hmm. yeah. is the notion that uh, you I, – I don't remember how you phrased it, but you said something about uh, – about appreciating awe, about fostering awe, or or let me see because that was a text that I sent to you earlier. It was a text. Um, I said we haven't talked about maintaining a sense of wonder and awe, and I in think, a long time. And I think that that's smart because I think that we as atheists, uh, as as non-believing, uh, non-superstitious people, mm-hmm. should work to maintain it. Mm. Mm. We should work. Part of our work in our lives should be to never let our lives seem dull and humdrum Hmm. because there's some, because it's amazing. This universe is amazing. There's beauty all around us Mm -hmm. and it's unless it's part of what gives life meaning, right? Is that appreciation, right? Not the beauty itself. The beauty itself is nothing. But the appreciation, but fostering yeah. a sense of appreciation yeah, absolutely. in ourselves. And, and you know, and, and you dissed on Kansas a minute ago. Yes. Um, because it's a shithole. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's a joke. I don't know. Actually, I think wide be... open spaces are ha- have a very different effect yeah. than standing at the, the precipice of, of a canyon. Sure. Or, you know, looking out on a, on having a high perch over a grand vista, right? Like... The wide openness of a prairie is, is actually quite is actually quite beautiful, you see, and you get it at the right time of day and the right light. Oh yeah, and it's gorgeous. Yeah, the, yeah, exactly. Like, sun, like sunshine find... coming through the crops, right. coming through a barley field is actually like I I have been known to literally stop my car and stand for an hour watching sunset over a barley field. Because it's so be- because You're known for this? I have been known to do it. Oh, okay. I know I did it. <laughs> <laughs> I also texted friends about it. <laughs> I'm known for this. I've been known to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you finding these barley fields? Uh, you know. Places. This this one was in Idaho, so it's not oh. so there were mountains too, but like but but there are also opener spaces. Yeah. In, 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 uh, but you and I have driven through Kansas. We have. And yeah. I actually, it was actually quite lovely. Yeah. I, we, I did point out at the time that we, if we had gone, if we had driven for an hour and gone through a time warp loop and gone back to where we were an hour ago and just kept doing that, we never would have known. It would have taken us. Yeah. I mean, th- a, there is something that, <laughs> especially when, you, when what you're doing is driving through. Yeah. They can become quite monotonous. It's all the same about about that landscape, but that's not. But to that say that doesn't. But actually, there's something that, amazing about that too. When you can see, you know, miles and miles in all directions, yeah. it's that it's that's quite stunning. Mm-hmm. The point is appreciate. The point yeah. is find something about your life to fucking appreciate because it's pretty amazing, and you get one shot at it. Yeah. You get one of these things. Yeah. We don't... No who, bullshit repentance crap. We don't know about no what happens Jesus after we die. Jesus is going to save you. Right. And you get to live with him in the sky when you're done. The only thing we know for sure is that we're in this life right now and you get one shot. Right. So, like, find the things that are amazing. Yeah. 
go play. Mm-hmm. You know, go uh, go to a, your nearest mountain or lake or, you know, even go to the top of a building mm-hmm. and look out on man's creation because that's pretty fucking amazing, too. There's a couple parking garages in this town that I like to. Me, too. I love it. I <laughs> get up on top of it. I love it. <clears throat> I, I will go to Temple Square in Salt Lake City, Utah. Surround myself with Mormons. Oh God! Just so that I can go to the top of the of the church office building because mm. that's a great view. But we also can go up to the top of to 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 you know we can drive up to amazing vistas mm-hmm. here in Salt Lake. We're yeah. very lucky. Yeah, but everybody's got something. Yeah. Anyway, cultivate it. Indeed. Get out there and uh, and maintain mm. that sense. Yeah. Give it care. Mm. It's good for you. Weed it prune it yeah yeah prune it get Mm -hmm. take out and and do like get rid of some of that cynicism fertilize it skepticism does not equal cynicism and cynicism is not going to be helpful to you water it Mm -hmm. you're you're loving the metaphor pick the fruit okay okay that frank's that it yields frank's on a on a metaphor (laughs) kick here Uh, we may be derailed completely (laughs) Whatever. Anyway, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you. If you guys have anything you'd like to say, ways of maintaining awe that you would like to share mm-hmm. with, uh, with with your fellow uh, atheists, write into us. Podcast about at thankgodimatheist.com. Or we'd love to hear your voice even. You can call us and leave us a message. The yeah. telephone number is 424-666-8442. Yeah. And, you know, we, we love playing those messages on, on, on the show. As long as that, yeah. I mean, keep it short and pertinent. And uh, we can't promise to play everything. We no, just, we can't play we, all of them. We but, do, and, and there are some that, you know, we don't be offended if we don't play yours. But, exactly. but we love to, to get the voicemails. Uh, go to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash Atheist, and click the like button. And while on Facebook, search for the TGIA Members Only Lounge and request to join. It is a closed group, but that means that it's curated, mm-hmm. it's moderated, it's uh, and uh, and we boot you out if you're naughty. That's right. Uh, hey, remember, five stars is a gift that's free to give mm-hmm. on iTunes or your podcast uh, blaster of choice. Uh, thanks to Mackenzie for all of her hard work on the Facebook page and to Sarah, Danny, and Amy for their work moderating the Members Only Lounge. And thank you to the Red Rock Hot Club for the use of their music and Gordon Johnston for the use of his music. Yes, and thank you, kind listener, for tuning in once again. We appreciate it, guys. Thanks so much. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.